Hi there, this is Diecast Channel, and in this video, I'm going to show you a little more about the story of my collection. These models are uh, 25 cars by the German Schuko, and they were sold in Brazil by a brand named Ray, which means King. They were sold back in the 80s, and they are very nice looking cars. They're mostly European cars made at a 1 to 66 scale. So stay with me to the end of this video. Don't forget to click the bell for news to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe my channel in case you haven't subscribed yet. So let's unbox those little beauties and take a better look at them. First thing I'm going to present before we unbox those cars is this is a special collection that was made at a 1 to 66 scale. It was basically made in Germany by Schuko, it's a German company. I've shown some Schuko models before, but these models in particular were also made in Brazil by a company that was named Alfemanarte, which made those cars for the domestic market. They were basically European models. Uh, not many of them were manufactured in Brazil as real cars. So I got to know the cars from the model cars, really, not from the cars themselves. I just had contact with those cars from some pictures and also magazines and books. One thing that's very interesting about this collection is they all came in this plastic clear display with a little foam underneath them. So it works just like a mattress, sort of protects the car. And those wheels with hubcaps are also very realistic, although they are uh, reproduced in every single car. So every car has got the same set of wheels and tires. I've got a bunch of those cars for restoration that were the ones I used to play with when I was a kid. Those ones were actually bought brand new uh, when I was older and I was actually collecting. Although some of the cars in this collection are survivors from that time. They were bought a little bit later when I was collecting and preserving more cars. Someday I intend to show uh, some restorations of those models. So let's go to them. So as we first open the little box, the little display, we can take a look at the car. It, it comes on this foam here that's uh, just like a mattress. And they always have some moving parts. In this case, uh, the trunk lid opens. And a very interesting feature about this car is we have some technical information. This is an Opel Ascona Voyage, which is a station wagon. We can see a station wagon like this one, but I think it's yellow. I don't remember exactly the color. In Beverly Hills Cop, in the first movie, when they arrest Axel Foley with a truck full of cigarettes. Behind one of the policemen, you can see the rear of one of those station wagons. One thing that's very interesting about this collection, it's got this uh, information, which uh, shows uh, the engine power, the RPM, uh, the top speed in kilometers per hour, uh, four-cylinder, in this case, of this engine. This information is all in Portuguese. Uh, it's a 1.6 engine, and the car is 4.2 uh, meter long and 1.6 meter wide. So you can take those measurements and divide by 66 and check with the car to see if the scale is correct. And here is the car. First one is this Opel Scona Voyage, which is a station wagon, is a compact station, uh, compact station wagon. And uh, this car is a four-cylinder engine, and it's, a, it's a pretty well detailed, really. It's, a, it's an old model car. I've got this car since the 80s, so it's really with me for about 30 years. And all cars from this collection have moving parts. This car has got a trunk lid that's openable. And the uh, dashboard is not detailed. Uh, wheels and tires are all the same for all models. Well, the cars look nice. The painting is pretty good. It's got some metallic colors. And I, I really got green cars, so this is uh, very interesting for me. One more station wagon, just like that one, but this cast in here is a little bit better than that one. And the color is uh, 
better uh, the painting quality is better and it's got the sticker on the door I, I personally don't like those stickers so much but I'm gonna keep them like that because the original so it's a vintage model car trunk open we can see the luggage compartment and the seats got a pretty nice detail really I wouldn't say they're perfect because they're pretty much the same for every car uh, we can even load something in the this back. This is a Manta, which is a Nadis, a German sports car. It's a it's a very interesting car. It really reminds a little bit of the Cavalier, and it's about the same size and the same type of engine as a four-cylinder, and it's it had several options of engines during all its life. There's a movie, a German movie, that's named uh, Manta der Film, which... Uh, mentions this car and the story of a young man a young guy who wants a golf gti but actually got a manta and there's a sort of a rivalry between the manta owners and volkswagen owners it's a comedy basically and it's a pretty interesting movie this manta has got opening doors uh, we can see there, there there's no detail on the doors actually there's a three spoke steering wheel but no dashboard actually and the interior is quite simple. It's not as bad as some models we sometimes see nowadays, but it's really not a premium model, just like those green lights and uh, Auto World and those more sophisticated models we find. But anyway, it's still a very nice looking car and with some very nice detail. I don't know if people from the States know those cars. If you have any information, Write down in the comments. Two more Opel models, which are those two Opel Admirals, the 2800E, and they are six-cylinder engine cars. They are about, well, they are almost five meter long, so they are about the same size of a Dodge Dart. So they would be a compact car for the American standards for back in the 1960s and 70s, but for German standards, they would be big cars. I think they really look very nice because I like those straight lines. Some people would say they are boxy, but I like those boxy cars. And they kind of remind American cars. And German cars, indeed, are like uh, shrunk American cars. So they look like shrunk uh, Chevrolets and Buicks. If, if we look at the old Opel models from the 50s and 60s and 70s, we're going to notice that. This car is really a very attractive car to me. I've always liked them. And these ones are two extra cars I bought later. I've got one just like this Go one, but it's uh, in a big need of a restoration. So someday I'm going to make a video uh, about a restoration of that car. But those two ones are intact. This car was Admiral. There was a Cadet. And um, Captain, which is a Capitan in, in German, and also uh, we call our German model. That's uh, the Audi 100, uh, which is a four-cylinder sedan. It's about the same size of a Volkswagen Quantum. And this car uh, was uh, was a car I used to play with when I was a kid. So it, it's got some chips in the painting, and also some touch-ups. Them some touches up. As we can notice, the steering wheel is red because I had to replace the interior of this car, this, this interior piece. Uh, the original one was with the steering wheel damaged and I got this in my junk box so I opened the car and replaced it. These cars are not put together with those mushroom rivets just like the Hot Wheels and Matchbox. They're rather some pins that uh, snap onto when you attach body and chassis. The negative side of it is those pins can easily break and I have some some of those cars I have to restore are with those pins, uh, some, at least one of those pins broken. So I'm gonna have to glue them back together. But that's not really a big issue since you're not gonna work on the car anymore. But if you want to open the car again, this might be an issue. And there's a little touch up in the rear because these parts underneath the taillights and the license plate 
were chrome instead of body color so I painted with the white I had to make it more realistic at a time unfortunately the white the, the white color I had was not exactly uh, the color this car has uh, windshield's got a little crack but a very tiny one car in general is in pretty good shape it's got opening doors as well another Audi model was this Audi 100 coupe which was pretty much like that sedan I've shown before but this one is a fastback model it's a more sport uh, more to the sport side uh, this one was pretty much untouched it's got some pits in the casting due to uh, production actually um, they're uh, defects from the factory I'm gonna try to get another one like that but uh, I'm gonna leave this one intact since it's brand new and original ever since I got it and when I got it I wasn't playing with the cars anymore so I got it as a collectible item actually Volkswagen Passat which is a Volkswagen Passat LS for Germany and could be TS as well it depended on the engine and it was a very famous car designed by Giorgio Giugiaro at a time I really like this car a lot really I'm not a Volkswagen fan but I like those Volkswagen one more subcompact Volkswagen car is the Schrocko which is a car that's still produced I really like the color of it it's a sort of a color between uh, blue and green and with metal flakes it's got a little chip in the front fender uh, because it was a little played with when I was a kid but still in a very nice shape it was very well kept steering wheel is a little bit better than those other steering wheels of those models so I, I think in this case they've done a pretty good job it's got opening doors as well the Volkswagen K70 I've seen this car in picture in a, in a magazine. Uh, there was a Motor Trend new cars for 1972 or 1973. I don't remember exactly which. But anyway, it was uh, in a section about imports for 1972 or 73. And they shown a car just like that one, but with a different color. And one thing that really drew my attention is how functional the car was and how big the trunk actually was. This car is a, a, a compact car, I would say between a subcompact and a compact. It's a compact sedan, it's a shorter than a Volkswagen Quantum, uh, although the design kind of reminds it a little bit in a sedan version. Uh, it's an interesting car, it's just like a sedan version of the Volkswagen Passat. One more model is this uh, Volkswagen Porsche, it's named Volkswagen Porsche since it's a Porsche with the air-cooled Volkswagen engine. So performance wasn't really a strength of this, of this car. And it had a central engine, and you could access the engine through this opening lid or uh, another access right here behind the rear window. It was a two-seater. That's the, the famous Porsche Carrera. That's a German sports car. I'm not really crazy about those supercars, especially the rear-mounted air-cooled engine cars. But uh, the Porsche Carrera is a car that really attracts me a lot. Uh, it's very classic and very classy, I would say. Uh, this model car is really uh, well-made and very attractive. I like it a lot. Perhaps my favorite car is a Mercedes, and I like those sedans. There's the Mercedes 200. The first Mercedes 200 was a gray one, just like the one on the left, and uh, it was completely trashed, completely demolished, so there was not really much left of it. Perhaps just a few parts I'm going to use to restore another Mercedes, just like that one, but uh, in a very poor condition, in a very rough condition indeed. And those two ones I've got uh, at a store when I was uh, collecting, so they are about... 30 years old in my collection and I'm just gonna keep them the way they are because they're really they're real relics that's one more Mercedes that's the 250 CE that's from the 70s I really like this car I, I had the chance to drive a car like that but it was a 250 C actually that didn't have the moonroof 
was a six cylinder just like this one and was almost the same color that one was gold and this one is uh, uh, sort of a bronze color uh, this is a very nice car I really like the shape of it it's got some little tiny chips on the painting uh, due to some little plane I really played just a little with it because I was starting uh, collecting instead of playing with the cars at a time and I really enjoy those Mercedes I still have the first one I had that was made as a convertible so uh, the experience was actually awful so I'm gonna have to work on it and do a lot of work to try to make it shiny again and another one that's uh, very old and it's going to be completely restored. One more Mercedes as a 450 SE. I've shown a 450 SEL in a 1 to 18 scale. And this is a very special car to me. I really like it a lot. It was played a lot, so it's a little bit uh, chipped, as we can notice the painting. But the car is still in very good shape. And since it's so, it has its original paint and original color, and I like this original color a lot, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. It's still in its display and in a very good shape. This is my favorite Mercedes of all time. A Mercedes 350 SL. It's a convertible. That's a, actually a Cabriolet. And this Mercedes is really very nice. I think it's much nicer than the Matchbox Mercedes. Uh, Matchbox used to make a Mercedes 350 SL at a time, which I think it's uh, quite awful especially that uh, plastic top. I've got the original one I had when I was a kid and I played a lot with that, so it's gonna have to be restored because it's in really rough condition. But this one is brand new. It just had a little chip in the right fender, right front fender. It was probably from due to handling, but uh, in general, it's a brand new, uh, ever since I got it and I got it about 30 years ago it's a very nice car and one thing that's very interesting about it is the steering wheel that it's just like the Mercedes steering wheel instead of being a general steering wheel just like the other cars from this collection C111 uh, this car uh, I think was actually a concept I, I, I don't even think it was a pre-series of it it's pretty much like the DeLorean it's got the going doors and it's a, it's got a central Wanko engine, so it's a rotary engine instead of being a conventional engine. This car, I don't remember to ever have seen it produced. And it was made in this very orange color at a time. And it's got the opening, going doors. They won't stay open, but they do open and close correctly. And it's my second Mercedes. Uh, the first one was completely uh, demolished, so there's nothing really left of it. Uh, I, I don't even think the seats were left of it. But anyway, I got this one because I think it's an interesting car. It's not really a car I appreciate. I don't like this sort of design, but it, it's still an interesting car and a very curious one. So let me know down in your comments if you have any more information on this car. I really don't know much about now, it. Speaking of competition, that's a BMW 2 2500 it's a six cylinder engine sedan uh, back from the 70s and uh, it's a uh, quite boxy really uh, pretty different from those BMWs we see nowadays but still a very interesting car uh, I think it's a very attractive car I like its lines and uh, it's a really nice model one more BMW is a 2000 TII or 22 I don't know exactly how to to call this car uh, but anyway it's a compact hatchback uh, sports BMW at the time and there's a model just like it but in a 1 to 18 scale by mini champs but still a little bit too expensive it's a four-cylinder BMW a very interesting car and this one is a little more chipped because it was exhaustly played with but still in a Pretty good shape in one piece and with all its parts just the chromes are quite worn out and the painting is quite chipped uh, besides there's a little crack in the windshield 
but I'm just going to leave it the way it One is. One French car, uh, people who know me knows I really don't like French cars at all. But this car, I think it's quite interesting. There's even one in a 1 to 18 scale made by uh, Norev, which is a French manufacturer. And the car is pretty much interesting. But uh, I only have this one, and it was uh, played with a lot. I might have another one waiting for a restoration, because the first one was gold. And this car was uh, a second model I bought. At a, at a time I was playing and collecting at the same time. One more French car, that's a Renault R17. Uh, this is not a car I would actually have nowadays. I really don't like its style that much. But I, I used to like it when I was a kid and I played with a lot. That's why it's got the cracked windshield and the, the painting is all chipped with some touches up. But anyway, it's still in a pretty good shape for its age. It's almost 40 years old and it was played a lot with. It's one Ford car, that's the Ford Granada. It has nothing really to do with the American Ford Granada. It's a German Ford Granada. And it's a very nice looking car. I really like the lines of this car. Although I like the American Granada as well. For the American standards, it's a compact. It's a six cylinder. I think it's a V6 actually. And it was a very interesting car and very famous car at the time. It was a better car than the Tonos and the Cartina. The first time I've seen a car like that in a movie was in Marathon Man, well, played by Dustin Hoffman, in which there was a scene in which uh, I think his uh, brother, who was a politician, was, and a bomb was placed inside a doll in a baby carriage right on a sidewalk next to the car. Uh, the bomb went off and it blew up, but the car wasn't harmed and his brother wasn't harmed. It really drew my attention because it was a Ford Granada. A couple Ford Capris uh, that were sold in the United States as Mercury Capri, actually, back in the 70s. Uh, the red one is a Capri 2 and the blue one is a Capri RS, which is a rally version of a car. Uh, the blue one was played a lot with, so that's why the painting is a little rough. But the red one is a brand new, it's in mint condition, since it was preserved without being played with, just for a collection, as a collection car. This car was a V6 and a very famous Ford, the German Ford car at a time. One more glance at the two Capris, very nice cars. Well, in this video, I'm not going to give those cars a grade, really. It's not the main objective of this video. Uh, I like them a lot. I it was... They, they were part of my uh, the story of my collection and uh, how this crazy stuff all started back in the 1980s. And I was really excited about those model cars when I saw the time in those acrylic displays with those chrome half caps and wheels and tires that were quite different from the ones I used to see in the Matchbox cars at the time. So I'd like to thank you for all likes and views, for all subscriptions. Please don't forget to subscribe in case you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, let me know down in your comments uh, what you think about the cars and about the video. Um, did you know any one of this car, of these cars? Did you know, did you have any information about this collection, about Shuko models? Um, have you ever had those cars when you were a kid? Let me know down in your comments. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.